Hello and welcome to another episode from Bow Beats, a channel about synthesizers and music production. In today's episode we are checking out Bitvig. It's a DAW that had caught my attention for quite some time, a lot of you viewers have been talking about it and it seemed like a very fun thing to explore. So my idea is to create a couple of videos where I explore Bitvig and kind of show you what I enjoy about it and you can make up your mind if it's something that suits you. And just to give you a little bit of a background, I come from Cubase, I've used it since it was called Cubasis I've used Nuendo, so switching to another DAW when you're so heavily invested into a, a product line is kind of hard. I've also used Fruit Loops a bit back when it was called Fruit Loops. I haven't touched it since they started calling it like FL Studio. And uh, I've also tried out Ableton Live, I've also tried out Logic, but I didn't really gel with any of them. But there was something about Bitvig that made me interested and I wanted to check it out. So let's have a little sip of the coffee and get to it. The first thing that struck me with Bitwig was how nice it looks. I think it looks really, really nice. So of course, for you just getting thrown into Bitwig now, in this video perhaps, it's the first time you're seeing it. It might look, oh, super messy, you know, all these things and there's stuff moving and yeah, you might not know what's going on. But I think a lot of the color schemes, a lot of the layout was so nice and intuitive for me. Just the way you, yeah, the way everything just fit very tightly together and I just want to play you guys like a first a first little demo here that I made this one I think this was the fourth attempt at making something this is just pure Bitwig sounds the kind of sounds that you're you're getting with Bitwig and I just want to play to you so you get an idea of of how it can sound I'll talk a little bit about some of the cool stuff uh, that I think are kind of unique to Bitwig so let's listen to it Yeah, so, so this was a, one of the first demos I made for or with the Bitwig software and I, I made it when I was on vacations. So I just had, you know, I had my laptop, a couple of headphones. I didn't, I didn't even use a sound card and just played around with it. And some of the things that are going on here are, are quite unique to, to Bitwig and, and the way that it works. And let me just try and show you. So here up on the first channel here, there's an FM4 and now I haven't delved super <laughs> deep into the different soft synths but the fm4 here is um is this one over here down here you can see that uh it's called fm4 so it's a synthesizer i, I think it's supposed to be an fm synthesizer i'm, I'm really not that good with fm synthesis so i can't really speak to it i think it sounds good basically what's going on here is that i first have an arpeggiator here you can see it says arpeggiator then there's the fm4 then there's a reverb and then there's the delay 4 and then you have another instance of delay 4 you know you can't really have too much delay i mean Maybe I slap a third and a fourth one on it as well. Now this browser lets you toggle between any device type, audio effects, instruments, node effects. And of course node effects are more like MIDI effects and instruments are the virtual instruments as you can see here. You get a sampler, uh, you get the policy and the primary is, is from Syntorial, so it's not from Bitwig. You get an organ, an FM4 synthesizer, a drum machine, and, and different different uh, synthesizers that generate um, drums, like the kick and hat and so on. Uh, and also audio effects. You have, for example, the amp, audio receiver, uh, bit 8, the blur. Yeah, you have chorus. Um, I think it's a, yeah, a compressor. And then you have different delays and reverbs and EQs and whatnot. So you just insert it. So if I just press here and then choose a phaser yeah, and OK and suddenly we have a phaser down here. In this song I have an arpeggiator playing so this is an arpeggiator here on channel 1 so if you just listen to it. Uh, 
and as you might notice, there's a bit of randomization going on here. And we can see down here, if we check down here, you can see um, this little, little icon here enables it so I can add three different modulators. Uh, basically modulators, if we press the plus here, uh, or it's, it's not a modulator per se, but uh, <laughs> I'm not really sure what to call it. Uh, yeah, I guess it's called a modulator. <laughs> All modulator locations. Yes, it's different. It can be an ADSR, a a HDSR, uh, audio side change, and of course the things that I enjoy a lot, uh, what I've been dabbling with, are the LFOs. So for example, you can add an LFO, press OK, and suddenly you have the LFO here, and now you can use this little blue blinking button here in order to pick any parameter of this first insert, uh, any parameter that is modulatable, <laughs> that you can modulate in order to modulate it. And as you can see, we don't have to do it now, but as you can see for this arpeggio, what we have is we have a modulation going on for the velocity, for the gate, we have it for uh, the, the, sh the shape, or not the shape, uh, the play mode of the arpeggiator. So if it's up, down, or up, um, up, up, down, down, or whatever it's called. And then we also have modulation going on for the octave, and I think maybe for the steps as well, I think. Yeah, you can see a little blue line here. So basically you can modulate different parameters uh, directly inside of, of this little insert effect, if you want to call it that. I think it's, it's a logical way to explain it. And that is of course, uh, and this what I'm talking about now, th these modulators are so interesting because if you can see here, if we just scroll, you can see I use a modulator as well here for the reverb. So the reverb here is modulated, the mix of the reverb is, is modulated. And you can use you can use random modulations. You can use LFOs, beat LFOs. So there's so much you can use to, to modulate a sound. And I've just, of course, I've just scratched the surface of this. But basically, you can create very interesting, intricate sounds. And I, I hope to show you even how I've done it with drums and our arpeggiator for drums. I think are very interesting. Um, yeah. So. The delay here, the first delay here is as well, I've modulated it, I think this is just, uh, this is a beat LFO here that I got on the mix of this LFO, uh, mix of the delay, so yeah, and it gives it kind of this random sound. And if we check the drums here, you can see that I haven't done that much modulation here on the on the drum track here, uh, it's basically, it's basically a sample, like a sample player with a couple of different samples here that we can listen to. Yeah, uh, I think they are totally fine. The ones you get with Bitrig sounds really, really okay for, for what you're paying for. But here we can also highlight something interesting. Here we have uh, performance controls as well that affects different things. So these could you, for, I suppose you could map these to a controller, for example, if we, you wanna, for example, control the low pass for, for a performance on the drums, for example. And the high pass here. And even the pitch. I think everything here is very cleverly integrated very much made to, to create interesting variations, making automation simple, making modulation simple, and I, I just I just enjoy it a lot. It, it's different from Cubase. I wouldn't say it's better or worse, it's just very different. I think it's faster in some ways to create something interesting. And I want to show you the smoothness of the, the automation here that I enjoy a lot. So let's see here. Um, basically, you, you press this button up here. Um, to enable automation, and if we press play here, and we can add some high pass to the drums. As you saw here, suddenly this high pass automation just appeared, it just appeared in inside of the program very quickly. It, it, it 
you know, it knew what you were automating. And, and that was something I enjoyed a lot. Cubase doesn't do that na naturally. So that's a big benefit for me, at least, you know, it quickens up the workflow a lot. And suddenly you have the, this little high pass automation here. So as you hear, I really like how the design and the technical aspects of this program kind of mesh together. It made it a really smooth experience. Now I haven't tried a lot with external instruments yet, so that's something I might test in the future if I do more videos on this. But let's check out another project. So what is going on here and what is kind of specific to, to Bitwig here that I found out? Well, first thing is that this song is based around a drum arpeggio. It's the, I used the Kansas kit here. Uh, it's one of the, you know, the preset kits. If we just have a listen to it. This is just an arpeggio playing. Now if we go into the track here, you can see that we have the arpeggiator playing and there's not, I don't think there's even any particular modulation going on here. So just the arpeggio playing and there's a, there's a, I think there's a flanger going on as well as the, as the low pass as well that is being modulated as well. And then we have a compressor and we have chorus and a bit, kind of a bit reduction. And then there's, uh, yeah, there's the EQ5 that does a little bit of a, <laughs> yeah, as you can see, a modulation of the higher frequencies. Uh, then what is also going on here is that we have uh, the dusty keys and the dacing keys. They're basically uh, two instances here of the the polysynth. I think both are yeah, both are the polysynth. It's um, it's a more standard synthesizer, I suppose, and uh, yeah, one of the virtual instruments. And it's just playing playing the same kind of arpeggio here, so we can listen to it. And if we check here on the on the dusty keys here, you can see that there's velocity and gate modulation, octave modulation, just like in the previous project. Uh, yeah, basically all the kind of blue values that you see are shifting are values that are being modulated. And then we have the, like the, the the drums here. I have the the kick, the snare, and the hi hats here. They are you know the soft synths that you get with Bitwig. I really enjoy it when they you know, have these dedicated devices. I think they're really cool. So let's see here. Yeah. So as you guys might understand, my kind of first impressions of Bitwig is that it's super well designed. It looks really good. It's a smooth experience. If you're looking for a DAW that is nicely priced and that lets you do a lot of fun things, a lot of modulation options, a lot of, you know, there's just a lot of creative options and it doesn't really, it's not really cluttered. There's not a thousands and thousands of functions that you might not use if you're not an advanced user. I kind of feel like that with Cubase. I got the 9 Pro and I probably I probably don't need such an advanced DAW a lot of the time. I think, and also if you've been looking at Ableton Live, for example, but you haven't really, you know, you haven't really felt it, there's something that you know, kind of puts you off. You should really try Bitwig, seeing if, if it's for you. I was really surprised at how much I enjoyed working in it. Now, will it replace Cubase? I don't know. I mean, this is more, it's not like a, something you choose rationally. I mean, I'm invested into Cubase and I've used it for such a long time. I have hardware dedicated for it. I'll also use Machine from Native Instruments. So of course, you know, just switching out and, and picking a new DAW is not that easy for me. But it's definitely something that I'll, I'll be using on my 
I'm using it on my MacBook Pro that I bring with me. Basically, that's my, my computer I use for most of my video editing and that I take with me on holidays. And I, since you need a dongle for Cubase, you don't need a dongle for Bitwig. That's real good. So it's a lot better for when I want to bring some with me. So I'll probably use Bitwig like a, a, when I'm moving about, you know, using it for ideas. Probably I will export some of the stuff into Cubase because I'm gonna feel more comfortable so far within it. But I don't know. I mean, Bitwig is, is definitely a contender to to use as a as a main DAW. I don't really see that many many big problems with it uh, for now. Of course, of course, if you're super invested into your DAW already, you know it's probably not the best idea to just throw it out just because Bitwig looks nice. But you can you know give it a try. I think it's cool. And yeah, obviously I'm a super novice when it comes to Bitwig. These are kind of exploration videos so when you just want to bring attention to interesting software, show you interesting stuff and hopefully found this entertaining. If you did, slap the like button, consider uh, subscribing. And if you want to support this channel further, you can always head over to patreon.com slash bowbeats. That's one way to help out the channel and help out me producing even more and better videos. Now. As for more Bitwig videos, I'm not sure. Do you want me to make more Bitwig videos? You know, leave a comment down there. Tell me what you want to see, what you want me to explore. Maybe you can give me some tips and hints on what I should check out. Of course, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm a novice, but I'm always interested to hear what you guys think. So I hope to see you in future videos and I hope you have a very pleasant day. Thank you so much.